I wasn't planning on doing a video on Carl Andre. In fact, I find him slightly less interesting than some of his minimalist contemporaries like Donald Judd or Dan Flavin. But Andre passed away yesterday, so I figured if there was ever a time to do a video on him, that time is now. Oh, and did I mention he might have murdered his wife? Yeah, we've got stuff to talk about, so let's get into it. Art lovers, welcome back to the channel. My name is Christopher West, and this is the place where we talk about all things modern and contemporary art and design. And today, on the occasion of his passing, we're going to talk about Carl Andre. Now, if you're more of a casual art nerd, you might think of Andre as that guy who made those sculptures you can sometimes walk on in museums. But he was quite a bit more than that. His art-making career spanned nearly seven decades, and he's considered one of the foremost artists associated with the minimalist art movement of the 1960s. He settled in New York in 1957 and began making sculptures influenced by Constantine Brancusi and by the black paintings of his friend Frank Stella. He experimented with other commercially available materials like styrofoam and cement blocks. His sculptures would be placed directly on the ground, bypassing the traditional pedestals that were often used to elevate these three-dimensional works of art. And he was wholeheartedly committed to material and geometry. His work was collected by some really important museums, like MoMA, the Tate, and the Centre Pompidou in Paris. But all of this would be eclipsed by the death of his third wife, the 36-year-old artist Anna Mendieta. She fell from their 34th floor apartment in Greenwich Village onto the roof of a deli. There were no witnesses to this event, and Andre claimed that they got into a fight because he was more famous than she was. He said, she went to the bedroom and I went after her and she went out the window. Andre would be indicted and then ultimately acquitted in a bench trial in 1988. Of course, museums and galleries would continue to show his work. He even had a major retrospective that was organized in 2014 that would start in New York and travel to Madrid, Berlin, Paris, and Los Angeles. And as recently as 2022, he had a solo exhibition at the Paula Cooper Gallery in New York. And it's not like his work would really evolve. He pretty much showed the same type of work he had been making for decades. But the interesting thing is that these exhibitions were constantly met with protests by people who wanted to keep the memory of Anna Mendieta alive and keep the focus on the tragic events of that day in 1985. In 2014, at his retrospective in Chelsea, a protest erupted involving dark red chicken blood and guts in honor of Mendieta's memory and her own artwork. A few years later, at the Geffen Contemporary at LA MOCA, Protesters distributed postcards featuring Mendieta's portrait with the question, Carl Andre is at Mocha Geffen, donde esta Anna Mendieta? And the Guerrilla Girls famously labeled him the OJ of the art world. For a deeper dive into the death of Anna Mendieta, I highly, highly recommend the six-part podcast by Helen Molesworth. It's called Death of an Artist. I'll put a link down in the description below or simply search for Death of an Artist wherever you listen to your podcasts. And this was my first attempt at scripting, shooting, and editing a video in one day, so hopefully it wasn't completely terrible. And if you like minimalist sculpture by artists that aren't accused of murder, you might enjoy my video about Michael Heiser, and I'll put a link to that right up here. And for more art talk, make sure you're subscribed to this channel so it shows up in your feed, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Ciao!